So Guo Chao, uh, from outfits to uh, food to anything packed with traditional Chinese elements, so it's, it's this rebuilding of uh, cultural confidence among the Chinese. It's the looking at what, instead of looking outside, looking inside, what do we have, what can we infuse into, from our heritage into what contemporary wear, so to speak. That is a major trend. After the pandemic, I guess people wanted color. So this summer we had dopamine. Dopamine. Yeah. dopamine. Hi and welcome to this episode of China XYZ. I'm Guo Yiming. Today we are joined by three beautiful ladies and we are going to talk about fashion and lifestyle in China, especially some of the fashion trends among the younger generation. First of all, we have Elspeth Van Perden. She, yes. Uh, she is a sinologist who explores China's fashion and urban culture. Yes. And also she's a journalist with Beijing Review. Very right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. And also we have Ying Zhizhao, uh, or Kelly Ying. She's a former uh, fashion editor, and also she's now an online influencer with over 1 million followers yeah. across uh, <laughs> social media platforms. Hi, everyone. And also we have Ban Xinyan. She's a graduate student at Renmin University of China. Welcome. Thanks to be here again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. So before this episode, we asked our uh, panelists to bring or wear their most favorite fashion items for today's show. And I'm so eager to find out what, what you're bringing here today and some of the interesting stories behind them. So uh, let's turn our spotlight to Elspeth first. I don't really have any favorites. I don't play favorites, but today I wore something that's quite special. So this bracelet mm -hmm. I got on a mountaintop in Tibet when I visited uh, the area for the first time in May of this year. So that is quite the, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice souvenir. And the other thing is the red earring I'm wearing. This is not a promo, but I have a friend, her name is Kiki Du, and she has this brand called Normal. Anyway, I've been wearing them for a long, long time, and she has very quirky designs. She also works with characters, like Chinese characters, obviously, and, you know, big, small, anything. So I, I just like it. Mm, yeah, I think this uh, earring has play a, has added a very playful element to your outfit yes, for today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Kelly? Okay, I bring this vintage bag. Um, uh, it is very special to me because um, it's my mother passed it to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has over 30 years. So uh, every time I use it, I need to be very careful with it because I need some um, maintenance. It is my mother's first designer bag and it is my first designer bag as well. Mm -hmm. So it's very special and uh, I think the style is Timeless elegance for me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the yeah. history. Yeah. <laughs> it's over 30 years, so you, you it's see. So yeah. <laughs> okay. It's brand new. Yeah. yeah, it's brand new. And now I think. Uh, in, among Chinese young people, we are dis rediscovering the charm of vintage mm. bags and also outfits. Mm, yes. uh, you can see there, there are so many uh, vintage stores opening here in China, especially in Beijing and yes. Shanghai. We will definitely get to that topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So how about you, Xinyan? Well, this is a bag I bought last year at a flea market. And it has this fluffy texture with rainbow colors. And I like this bag because it really fits the winter. It's so freezing outside that I have to wrap myself up tightly with down jackets, and they usually come as white or black. So these fluffy rainbow could really light up my outfit and also my mood for the day. And besides, the, the store owner was a girl several years older than me, and she told me this bag was sued by her mother. So every time I stroke the fur, I could feel the tenderness as if I were holding hands with my mom. So I think this bag not only represents a brightness amid the this green winner, but also reminds me of my loved ones, especially my mom. Oh. Yes, did, I love it. Did you it. get it in Beijing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Last year, last winter, actually. Last winter. Yeah. Oh, we all needed a little color. Yeah, during this 
great winner. Yes, uh, I think this really brights up your winter outfits, especially. Also, it carries a very heartwarming story behind it. So, um, Elspeth, you have been living in Beijing for many years, mm -hmm. and I think you have observed Chinese fashion and lifestyles. Uh, and also uh, some of the trends globally. So what do you think are some of the unique aspects of Chinese fashion lifestyles compared to other countries or regions? Right now, uh, right now. Well, I usually, I do tend to look at China fashion because that is what I do. <laughs> the biggest aspects are actually for me, especially over the past five years, what makes Chinese fashion stand out, right? Guo Chao. And also, Vintage. Yeah. We will mention, I'm going to mention two. Basically, let me explain quickly. It's, it translates as national wave, but you can also uh, translate it as hip heritage. It means uh, fashion, food, whatever sectors, even tech right now, are being infused with traditional Chinese elements, mm -hmm. right? And it's officially been a term since 2018 when Li Ming, the brand, hit the New York Fashion Week can't walk. Mm -hmm. And that quartal was a fact, but it's been going on for longer than that. You could see this in the years like the early 2010s mm -hmm. when I first started working here. And um, so quartal, uh, from outfits to uh, food to anything packed with traditional Chinese elements. So it's, it's this rebuilding of uh, cultural confidence mm -hmm. among the Chinese. It's the looking at what, instead of looking outside, looking inside, what do we have? What can we infuse? into from our heritage into what contemporary wear so to speak that is a major trend and linked with that is the vintage trend i find and by vintage i don't necessarily mean what we usually understand as vintage as in i go buy clothes that have been worn mm -hmm. but more like um going back to styles that were once upon a time in fashion like the Dongbei Da Hua this winter, the Northeast floral pattern or the floral pattern from Northeast China, should I say, very bright, like the green, the red, the cotton padded jackets, and right now the Da Juni, yeah, or the what is it, Jun Da Yi? Sorry, Da Juni or Jun Da Yi. God, my yeah. It means the military coat. It is that typical olive drab cream coat um, from the People's Liberation Army mm -hmm. that was usually associated with, well, cool. it was like a bit like there. That's what they are very proud to show. Yeah, yeah. I actually quite like it. Yeah. Anyway, that has made a comeback. So it's not like people are wearing these coats that were given to, passed down to them. They are buying new ones on Taobao, for example. Yeah. But that type of vintage, and you see it with a lot of styles and items, so that's not necessarily guo chao, but it is kind of a, related, yeah, a different, a vintage element of guo chao, if you, those for me stand out, mm -hmm. and that they do set Chinese fashion apart from other countries. Yes, so if you were, uh, go to the Forbidden City uh, these days, you, you can see uh, hundreds or uh, thousands of young girls wearing those you know, like traditional Chinese outfits yes, or Han Fu so, yeah. posing for pictures. Yeah. And also there is a rise of new class, uh, new Chinese class style or fashion or something what you call Guo Chao or Xin Zhong Shi that is yeah. catching up um, among the younger generations. Yeah. So compared to like 10 years or like 10 years when you first came to China, uh, how, um, what are some of the changes among Chinese people's fashion preferences? Uh, so when I first came to China, that was uh, 07, 08 as a student in 2010 when I started working. Um, it, it was, well, mm, it wasn't really fashionable or what you were seeing was more imported from South Korea, Japan, maybe some European styles, overseas labels, mm -hmm. emphasis on the overseas labels, yeah. and that is completely changed mm -hmm. over the years that 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 whatever style it was has left the building and has been replaced with something way better <laughs> something very stylish so. so what are the reasons behind this kind of shift you think I mean, you've seen this everywhere with developing societies in the in the in modern times for example 40 years ago or something you had south korea it started you know, developing economically, 
And so uh, then you had the emergence of a middle class. And once people have houses, cars, they've met all of their basic necessities, mm -hmm. they start looking at, so what is it I want? What do I want to look like? That happened in South Korea, I think, 70s, 80s. 80s, 90s, this happened in Japan. Mm -hmm. And then in the 2010s, it was China's turn. Mm -hmm. And um, that is when China started getting this middle class. And yeah, after a couple of years, they had their houses, they had their cars, and it's like, okay, next level. That's behind the shift. So next level came with that realization of we don't have to constantly look outside for inspiration or labels or, uh, well, maybe luxury labels then still, but for in generally speaking, we have our own styles. But I think that whole middle class development was the, the biggest driver. I think I totally agree. Um, actually, uh, in my work, in my pre uh, previous work at work, um, young people is really seeking for big labels, uh, designer bag, uh, fashion houses. But now, um, a lot of people will show their personal identity, uh, some, such as uh, some traditional elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are very proud to showcase our culture and very proud to wear our own clothes. I think it's a big change. So it's indeed a very exciting time yeah. for the Chinese fashion yeah. right, right now. Yeah. People are expressing their self-identities or individuality yeah. through their choices of clothes or accessories. So, um, Xinyan, I know that you are a Generation Z, -er, and you, you you come from Chongqing, which is um, which is known for uh, its girls having its uh, very stylish looks. As a young student, as a Generation Z, -er, what are some of the fashion trends do you find most appealing, and how about your peers? Well, I have to say the latest trend I find appealing would be the new Chinese style you just mentioned, the Xin Zhongshi. I really like the improved, the modern, stylish qi pao because it looks so elegant and stylish. And I really like how it makes this uh, traditional element of Chinese culture and the contemporary aesthetic standard. And so do my peers. Uh, during this year's graduation season, lots of my friends chose to wear hanfu, qi pao, or horse face skirt to go with their academic dress. And they were truly a sight for sore eyes. And also many of them chose to wear these clothes uh, when they travel abroad. So I think it's very interesting phenomenon. And it's also a very beautiful phenomenon as well. So as a young student, uh, how do you navigate the world of fashion to maintain your style with a limited budget? Well, I think fashion, I think fashion is never about the price tag. There are lots of fashionable outfits designed by actually nobody. And thanks to the prosperous e-commerce, we now have these platforms like Alibaba, JD, and Little Red Book that have those tons of beautiful clothes and accessories. And they are, many of them are at reasonably priced. So they're cheap. Yeah. Honey, they're cheap. We're and, just gonna... <laughs> yeah, of course. And if we want to buy something more special, we could also visit those vintage stores offline. This one was also interesting is that the teapot, as we know it, in the 1920s, right, it was the sign of liberation for women, right? Yeah. The hemlines were raised, it was everything. They started going to school. They fought for it, they started working, and so it was a sign of liberation. So it's very interesting, I don't know how exactly, but it just is, to see it again mm. in the 2020s. Yes. There's something very, I don't know, I, I, I like it. There's something interesting there. Um, to be honest, um, in my age, only elder people wear well qi pao for the special occasions. But right now, I think a lot of people especially young people, we are wear it at daily look. Mm -hmm. um, but the cheap house is, is modern one. It's not uh, as tight as before. So actually, some local designers uh, rebuilt the cheap house for modern people, for ladies to, to, to wear it on work. Um, the, yeah, so we can wear it. Actually, I 
uh, purchased a lot of Chipa from the Taobao. And I, wa I wore it to Suzhou last summer just to fit the atmosphere. Yeah, it's really a wonderful, it was a really wonderful journey. Yeah. Yeah, so chipaos are not only reserved for special occasions now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it is uh, a, like a daily outfit. You can pose yourself to express your to express individuality or something of a, your, your pride in the Chinese culture or tradition. You can even have just, you know, I've seen men, yes, I've seen men wearing like winter jackets with which have, you know, a clothing. Oh, yeah. Zhongshan Zhong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Zhongshan Zhong, yeah. like that kind of thing. It's very fashionable as well. So what do you think are some of the fashion trends that are representative of the young Chinese people? Yeah, so aside from that Guotao and uh, vintage uh, Vixen stuff, I would say it's still definitely a lot of streetwear. Nowadays. Yeah, um, at leisure, but mostly streetwear. And also what I still see quite a lot here specifically is the whole oversized. Yeah. Oh, Hello, yeah, 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 oversized. Hello, yeah. example. Yeah. Yeah. This is ridiculous. But yeah, so um, th th I know that might sound very general, but it's just an observation. I don't see the oversized trend that much in other countries, mm -hmm. and I see it here with women and men alike. Yeah, so uh, what do you usually find your inspiration or fashion inspiration? I've been following some fashion bloggers like <laughs> Vox, yeah, and, and they are on social media. They will, po they will po post their uh, insights for what to wear for the day so I can learn from them. And also I will dress according to the uh, occasion, like my trip to Suzhou, I will wear according to the atmosphere, the environment or the purpose of my journey, like who I want to become. I want to become a lady from the traditional gardens, so I would wear cheap, I would wear cheap hall. And, think, and I think that's a way to find inspirations. Um, actually, we have a lot of uh, a lot of channels to follow. Uh, for for me, uh, I will see some movies, uh, especially some especially some classic movies, and uh, and, and I will see some uh, reality reality show. <laughs> <laughs> And the uh, most information I looking for the fashion item is from a uh, magazine and the social media. And uh, I also will see some uh, on Instagram as well. In last year, it's very interesting that a lot of people will choose the old money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Quite luxury. Yeah. Jing Shu. Jing yeah. I think some brands like Ralph, uh, Ralph Lauren mm -hmm. Has, making a yeah, comeback. Yeah, they're coming back uh, in, on this trend mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, globally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you think uh, these social uh, media platforms can shape or change the way people approach fashion? Especially in China, where social media is present mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, styles and influence ch influences change with the tap of a screen right now. Yeah. You, you mentioned the old money style. Yeah. Well, you have it again now. Two weeks ago, it was all about the Maillard. Uh, may, may, may la, may, 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 thank you. Maillard, uh, which made, uh, it's, it's like this whole autumnal palette, so to speak, and it made people look good enough to eat. Yeah. I mean, that was two weeks ago, and now we're on to Lao Tianfeng, old yeah. money style. After the pandemic, I guess people wanted color, yeah. so this summer we had Dopamine. Yeah. Dopamine. Yeah. yeah. Which is one of the buzzwords of 2023, actually. China online buzzword. Yeah. And then at, right after that, or together with that, we had the Barbie core. But one month later, we were back to urban core. And urban core was already here in March because people were going outside to get fresh air. But during the pandemic, we also had mountain core and gorp core. It's all outdoorsy. It's all outdoorsy. But it changes. Every two weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, how is social media shaped fashion? Well, everything I just said. Yeah, a great deal. <laughs> yeah. So swipe uh, next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm looking at our student here because I'm very interested in um, does it uh, lead to a lot of, let's call it peer pressure um, amongst yeah. students and does it also, this whole influencing stuff combined with 
uh, Taobao, this, yeah. these kind of outlets, does that lead to overconsumption among students? Yeah, I totally so, agree with you. Well, I think there are lots of my classmates uh, during the social media work, and they, some of them are really uh, famous uh, influencers on the social media, on the, on the Little Red Book, and they will share their daily life. Yeah, oh, so okay. I, I would check her video and I would, I would think, wow, that's a very wonderful life. <laughs> and I would t totally get this kind of peer pressure. Yeah, I would think, why, yeah, yeah why, why, why can I be like her? Why can I get that much attention from so many people that I don't know? Uh, yeah, but I think it's just a phase. I think like 30 minutes later, I'll be, oh, I don't care. But and how about the overconsumption? Is there such a thing? That yeah. Taobao, because oh, it's Arshu Oh, it's 20 yuan. Mm. So, like $3. Yeah. Let's get it. Yeah, well, I think it really exists. Uh, I think I remember uh, when I just become a, became a freshman of, uh, during my first college year, I was like, well, I finally got money by myself. <laughs> I could spend them without consulting my parents. So, I think during that year, especially the Double Eleven or Double Twelve Festival. There are so Major many. Shopping festivals, yeah. yeah, there are so many cheap things like twenty or even ten yuan on the uh, on the uh, the Alibaba and JD. And I did buy a lot of things that I don't need. Later, I find so yeah. I, and I think as I grew older, I would I would stop such overconsumption thing because I find it's totally useless and it's a waste of money. Well, that's that's great. That's great. Yeah. So, what, uh, looking ahead, what do you think are some of the um, fashion trends that you particularly anticipate in China and globally? I will say this fashion is cyclical. We all know that it comes back every twenty years. So, uh, well, there's that. Globally speaking, in China, I think we're gonna just continue with the guotao. Yeah. In different ways, the vintage, in different ways, it's only going to get stronger, I think. Yeah, I think um, the whole uh, workout wear, sports wear, mm -hmm. because that whole taking care of yourself physically and mentally is really getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So from an insider's perspective, what are some of the future trends in China's fashion landscape? And how do you leverage your strength to stand out? Um, I think the, the trends should be um, very niche market. Uh, if you want to run a business on the, in this field, you should be very unique and you should uh, very focus what is popular, <laughs> right? I think uh, if, you are, if you want to run a business in China, self-promotion is very important. Mm -hmm. So. Um, want to be a niche market, so your videos, your photos, your models should be consistently different. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh, you should share your daily work and uh, you, you should find your unique identity for your shop and for your models. That is important as well. And uh, I think the sporty look will continue for, for a while. I totally agree with you, um, but it maybe has the different elements like colors or yeah. so if you want to be stand out from the crowd, you must have the unique styles. So I think the small niche market uh, is the best way uh, in the future. Mm. How about you, Xingyan? Well, I think the future of Chinese fashion would definitely be more diverse because everyone has his or her own interests and we all want to be ourselves. And, and because the information exchange nowadays is so convenient and so frequent right now, we could absorb the fashion trends from overseas like in just a minute. Yeah. And But also our confidence in our traditional culture has grown so fast that there are, we could see lots of people wearing chipa and hanfu on the street and finding no different from wearing hoodies and jeans. So I think <laughs> okay. it's about diverse, diversity. Yeah. 
And this brings us to the end of today's conversation. It's been a wonderful journey exploring the vibrant world of Chinese fashion and lifestyle, especially among the younger generation. And thank you for tuning in for this episode of China XYZ, and we hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you.